Hi everybody and welcome to this business continuity with Azure series. Today we're going to be talking about disaster recovery. Now, disaster recovery is the process of bringing, bringing your IT systems back up and running after something has happened, either that be a natural disaster or a human induced disaster. Now looking at the research, there's a number of reasons that we have those disasters or disruptions with our systems. The most significant one is a systems failure. Something is broke or isn't working the way that it should do. The second one is a power failure. Again, whether that be something that um, has failed or maybe it could be someone has been drilling out in the street outside and caused that issue for you. The third one is a natural disaster. Some kind of weather element has impacted your data center and knocked out your IT systems. And the last one is cyber attacks. Someone is trying to maliciously get into your system and has caused an outage. Now, Tailwind traders um, currently have their own data center and they rent a space in a co-location data center and they use that for the disaster recovery space. Their setup is fairly simple, fairly straightforward and probably fairly familiar with you. They have that, that primary site in Glasgow and they use a third party software to replicate um, their data and their applications across to more kit, more hardware in a co-location space in Edinburgh which is about 46 miles away from them. So if there was some kind of weather element or a power failure in Glasgow, it hopefully wouldn't be affecting Edinburgh and they can bring everything back up there. Now Tailwind Traders are looking at renewing that contract. So their co-location provider contract is up and they're not sure whether to renew that or looking at um, an alternative. Now they've not re really given us any criteria um, around what they're going to use to evaluate the alternatives, but they want to get some proposals in. So I'm going to propose that they look at using Azure and Azure Site Recovery instead. Now with Azure Site Recovery, we have the ability to take that those applications, all that data, copy it from on-prem and put it up into Azure. So Azure becomes that secondary recovery site for them and Azure Site Recovery becomes that kind of replication software that does all of that for them and can trigger um, their disaster recovery. Now it gives us the ability to set up our RTOs or RPOs, which are recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives. And we have the ability to kind of flexibly do what we need um, to make Tailwind traders confident with this solution. We also have the ability to actually um, test the disaster recovery plan. We can implement uh, a drill that doesn't actually deal with um, any of the production workload. So we can work through the processes, refine it and make sure everybody understands what their role is during a disaster recovery and what they need to do. We also have the ability to create those application consistent snapshots, which are super important for a lot of applications. So for example, if you're using um, Microsoft SQL, um, there's often some pending writes that are happening within memory and the application consistent snapshots can help capture all of that and make sure that when you do bring up the application in the secondary site, that all of that's captured and, and, and should be where it is. And lastly, we have the ability to actually automate some of the process. Um, so often you can have these complex procedures for your disaster recovery plan, whether that be re-IPing a bunch of servers or starting up some services in a certain order. We can create a script and then implement that with Azure Automation so that it kind of takes out that human element so we can try and mitigate against anybody accidentally typing the wrong thing or starting the wrong service at the wrong time and make the process much more streamlined for everybody. Now again, the solution is a bit simplified. Um, we can do away with that secondary site in Edinburgh. We don't have to pay that co-location and we can get rid of the hardware or utilize it somewhere else. And then we use Azure Site Recovery on-prem to replicate everything up into Azure and Azure becomes that secondary site for them. Now doing this, there's a bunch of benefits to Tailwind traders. Like I said, the complexity of protecting those data and applications can be taken away. And we can also um, take away some of the complexity when we're bringing everything back up by using scripts and automation. We can also deal with the large amounts of data that you may have, that Tailwind traders may have on-prem. We can scale that in Azure to a certain extent. We can also deal with any of the long-term um, data retention requirements that Tailwind traders have. Again, we have that depth and that breadth of protection built into Azure Site Recovery and Azure. 
and we have that test bed so that we can work through everything we can work through the disaster recovery plan anything changes on prem we can we can um, replicate that change up and then work through it and make sure the documentation and the processes are all ingrained and all set out for everybody and we can possibly make some savings around this. So at the moment, as I said, they pay for the contract, they pay for the rent of that co-location space, and they've also invested a bunch of money into hardware for that co-location space. And that's sitting doing nothing most of the time. So we can maybe save some money by utilising Azure Site Recovery and Azure as well. So if you want to learn more about Azure Site Recovery or Disaster Recovery with Azure, if you head over to our documentation and go to aka.ms slash BC Recovery, we can, you can read about Azure Site Recovery and the processes around all of that. We also have a module within MS Learn where you can learn about disaster recovery and site recovery and how you can implement that as well. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll catch you on another one of these videos. Thank you.